Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we've had the past couple of weeks off from having, uh, having our webinar series, and now we're kicking it back up again. So excited to have everybody uh, on board today. We've got, we've got a lot of people, which is uh, pretty exciting. I think this is a really good topic. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rob Romanowski. I am the Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And today leading the charge for us is Emily Pinto. And Emily is a solutions consultant with PTC. Uh, she's done a couple of webinars for us in the past. She does a great job. So I'm very excited to uh, have her with us today and, and leading this. Um, so everybody's gonna be on mute during the webinar. If you have any questions, type them into the chat box, the questions, uh, questions box, and we'll try to answer them as we go. Uh, but we'll definitely get, get your questions answered. And this webinar will also be recorded and we will upload it onto our YouTube page and send you a link so that you can view it later. So without further ado, Emily, why don't you take the con? Thanks. Hi everyone. So my name is Emily Pinto and I am happy to be here to talk about model-based definition and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing today. Um, I, uh, I, I specialize, I work with all things Creo. I've been with PTC for about three and a half years, and this is a topic that comes up all the time as companies are looking, you know, for more effective ways uh, to do things and, and to take advantage of technology that, that's available today. So we're going to talk about model-based definition and gd &T together because both go hand in hand with, um, you know, hey, let's rethink the way we're doing our um, detailing and let's try to get better information, you know, more efficient format, any uh, improvements or innovations that can go on around there. So they're a little bit tied together because, you know, geometric dimensions are some of uh, what you put in to your detailing, whether that's um, on drawings or model based, like we're talking today. And we can uh, start with the PowerPoint. I have um, a short presentation to go through the different capabilities and, uh, and different benefits that, that you might find working with model-based definition in Creo. Uh, and then I have a demonstration to show uh, what that would look like, go through some examples, um, you know, just kind of getting used to what, what you would do if you were adding this into your process. So um, let's start here. We're gonna start with some challenges that uh, PTC aims to address with the Creo model-based definition and gd &T solutions. Um, and, you know, the main thing here is that traditional 2D prints are costly and often incomplete uh, for transferring design information. They've been around forever. It was the way that things used to be done. And, you know, industry has taken a little bit to, um, to switch over, just about out of habit, you know, of um, switching off of these 2D drawings. And, there's a, you know, there are some issues with 2D drawings. They're hard to, to understand if you're looking at them. It can be difficult to see, you know, okay, what's this dimension referring to? What edge is this that we're talking about? Oh, whoops, I didn't realize this was a cut, not an extrude. Um, you know, different things that, that can just go wrong. And they're hard to keep up to date as you're changing and making changes in your model uh, to make sure that every important dimension is called out in these drawings. Uh, you know, it can be difficult uh, to keep up with things can fall through the cracks. So like I said, difficult for the consumer, whoever's looking at this on the other end to, to consume because uh, it's kind of all over the place. It's hard to see exactly what's going on. There's a lot of information. The lines that are representing your parts are often hard to tell apart and hard to see where different edges are and what they're representing. Now, switching over to 3D models, it's now that we do all of our modeling in CAD instead of you know, 2D drawings usually, we think, oh great, we'll put the annotations in 3D. But it turns out that that's actually just as uh, challenging sometimes as the 2D version, right? This is why uh, maybe not everybody has switched over yet is because if you throw all of your dimensions and all of your annotations onto the model, it can be difficult for the consumer to understand what's the most important thing here. What are we calling out? You know, what what do I need to pay attention to, and and what view is this? Um, and so this this really provided a lot of challenges as well. 
And so what PTC found working with customers and model-based definition uh, over time is that it's all in the details. So 2D drawings, the way that they're done, that's been refined over years and years and years. And now a model-based definition has been around for quite some time and the details are, are being worked out, right? We have the capabilities now to make these, um, you know, a, a bit more efficient, easier way of doing it. Um, now there are always standards that are evolving and competing. So Creo, uh, you know, has to keep up with the most up-to-date standards that are out there to give you the you know appropriate information. Now geometric dimensioning and tolerancing uh, is a great way to put you know robust means of describing the information and and the parts of and assemblies that you're you're trying to represent. <clears throat> And it's really complex. It adds more complexity. It's a whole skill in itself to be able to put these on to your model complete and correct. You have to be a little bit familiar with what's going on. And then the person on the other side has to be able to understand those. And the problem is that if anything is incomplete, the whole thing is you know, pretty much useless and uh, frankly, just more confusing to the person who's trying to understand it. So trying to put these on and making a lot of mistakes because they are so complicated means that maybe you're introducing more errors or lost time so they really need to be correct and complete so uh, the solution here like i said ptc has been learning over time and has been updating the model-based definition capabilities with every release of creo this is something that that is a, a focus area of ptc because uh, we see it as you know a, a good innovative way of of doing things that there's room for improvement. So, Creo Parametric Four had a total uh, facelift for the model based definition and the GDNT. So, if you're familiar with the the annotation capabilities in Creo before Creo Four, they've been redone. Um, more functions, more control over the details, more automation, more intelligence from Creo's end to make sure everything's going in correctly, and uh, and just easier to use, better UI, right? So a lot of nice tools. So we'll talk about the capabilities here briefly. I'll try to keep it short because you know this can get quite detailed uh, if you go into every single uh, aspect of, of these uh, annotation features. But um, you know, in general here, datum feature symbol enhancements. Uh, this is the symbols that, that we have to use. And these are updated to match standards to, to be what you know different companies are using different industry standards it also shows you now if there are invalid characters if you have something that just doesn't make any sense at all creo says hey you know here's a red squiggly line this is incorrect you should probably take a look at that so it doesn't let you just put absolutely anything you know if it's something that really is just not possible it'll, it'll let you know uh, we also have datum target enhancements so just one example of how you have more control and it's automated, so you can just choose how do you want this to be represented. You can, uh, you know, add those elbows, change the display, whether this is for company uh, standards that you do in your company or industry. If your, you know, industry has a particular way of showing different things, uh, and of course, then those the, the general standards as well. GTAL enhancements makes it faster and easier to do all of those little things, like you know, I was saying. The issue that sometimes comes up with MBD and GDNT is the, the details. You have to have control over those uh, because it is complex. And so you need to be able to have all that complexity easily controlled, but also not too complicated to use. And PTC really has had this as a focus for uh, the user interface and, and how you're adding these onto your model. Um, so some annotation enhancements, all of this that we're talking about falls under annotation annotations. So this comes with every seed of Creo. Rob and I were just talking about annotations are a core function of Creo. So everything that you're going to see here for model-based definition that we've talked about so far is included. You can do um, right now. And you can set up different combination state enhancements. So as I was saying, you know, detailed uh, drawings, 2D drawings, you know, we've, we've gotten used to the different views, right? Here's a right side view and look, you can see different dimensions that are easier to see on the right side. And here's a top side view and you can see different dimensions that are easier to see from the top side. And, you know, maybe your orthographic view here are the most important things to, to call attention to that are driving this design. And 
we've gotten used to be able to explain information by breaking it into these little bite-sized pieces. Um, and so what, what we've done for model-based definition is the same thing, but you have all the power of 3D behind it as well. So combination states are something that you can save your model as. It's like a little tab, basically. It's like a snapshot, a snapshot of your model where it's a little tab down at the bottom that saves the orientation of your model, the coloring, the appearance, and what annotations are visible. So for example, here's two different combination states of the same part. You can see that if you're calling attention to certain dimensions on certain surfaces, maybe this is the orientation you want it in. And maybe you want to even color those parts that you're, you're going to dimension uh, with those annotations. And then for the one below it, you can see that the whole solid piece is transparent and the inside surface is colored. So now you can tell, the consumer can tell, oh, we're, we're referencing the inside edges now for the annotations that are on this. So you can see an example up here as well, right? Calls attention to dimensions that are easy to see in this orientation. And then the coloring adds another aspect to, hey, these are the outside dimensions. These are the inside dimensions. Makes it very easy. Um, so that's a really great thing. Now, how do you want to consume these and pass these off to uh, the next person downstream? Step AP242 and JT, this is a really great option if whoever you're sending it to can view this AP242 because you're able to save rich content. And that means colors, annotations, orientations that will all come up just like that. You can also have Creo View. We have a free version and a paid version that allows for notes, but anybody can you know, use that that um, free version and download Creo View, and then they can see your part. They can see the different combination states, like the tabs down at the bottom. They can see the colors. They can rotate it, look at the annotations, see the, the you know bill of materials or the, the parts list down the side. Um, the other really great option is printing combination states. So you don't even have to have a fancy way to view these. You can just pull up the combination state You know, for each combination state you make, pull it up, and print it as a static image uh, or, or however you want to save that as a static uh, document. And you know, just like your drawing where you have different views of your model with different annotations on different views, you can have different combination states. The only difference is this is a little bit more detailed because you could have colors, you can have the 3D views, it's easier to understand. Um, so talking about GDNT Advisor, everything we've mentioned up to this point is free and included. Well, not free, but uh, included, I should say, if you have Creo. So that is the one caveat. You do have to have Creo. Uh, but if you have Creo, you have these capabilities already. So you can get you know, started working in your annotation tab. GDNT Advisor is a separate option that you can add on if you'd like. And what it does is it gives a little bit more guidance for adding geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. So you can do GDNT without GDNT Advisor, just in the annotation tab. But if you're struggling maybe to get everybody up to speed on what to add, make sure it's correct and complete, that's where Advisor comes in. So what it does is it basically, you pick a, a feature that you'd like to add a geometric dimension tolerance on, and then it pulls up relevant uh, options for you. So you're not overwhelmed with a bunch of buttons that may or may not apply. It really shows you what, what things you might wanna add uh, and eliminates the things that you wouldn't. And then it actually gives you, um, you know, uh, guidance for what to pick. So you can see here, it actually suggests which types of things to, to choose from. Um, and you get a better, uh, idea of how to put these on in the future because we have an advisor tree where anytime you get an error or a warning, it directly links you to help for that error or warning to say, why is this coming up? And what is the idea that's supposed to be happening here? Why is it wrong? So that's really nice. This also GDNT advisor keeps up with all the latest standards as well. So, you know, you're always up to date formatting and, and such. Completely integrated within Creo, it just gives you, a, you have the option to, to open it from um, your applications tab, but it just opens a tab, so you're still in Creo. And you get this model tree with GDNT Advisor that shows all of your annotations as a feature uh, that, you know, it's an annotation feature and you can see it in your feature tree just like you would uh, model, you know, features in a part. You can also reuse existing annotations. So like I said, Creo, has redone its annotations completely, made them easier to use, better, starting with Creo 4. If you have annotations from you know, way back, 
even, you know, this image is pro-engineer and you want to bring those in and still keep the intelligence and, and such, gd &T Advisor actually does that as well. So um, just another option. Okay. Any questions? I'll just remind you to put those in the chat. And I will switch over here. Okay, so we covered all the key concepts. So now we can just have some fun taking a look at, at what's going on here. Uh, this is just a part. Like I said, every you know core Creo has annotations. So this is just the annotations tab. And down here at the bottom are these wonderful combination states. And I love combination states. One of the actual, actually I should mention, not related to model-based definition necessarily, but combination states can also be viewed in augmented reality now. So if you're in your modeling, if you're, um, you know, if you're, you want to see for a design review or see what it looks like in person, if you have a bunch of different combination states with colorings and transparencies, you can see those in AR. Um, but you can also print them out for downstream deliverables. So uh, once you create them, you know, you click on it and what it does is it changes the appearance to be however the motto was when you took that snapshot. So in this case, it was upside down and it has these particular annotations on it, this particular coloring. These are easy to add. We can take a look at that. Um, you can simply add a geometric tolerance by selecting it and then selecting the feature. So for this case, the surface, and then it gives you all these options. So this is not the advisor. This is you know, available for everybody. So this is just an example of how you would do it in the annotations tab. Um, but you get all these options. For example, maybe you want flatness and you put in your tolerance. Uh, so whatever you want that to be, and then it shows up. So this is how you would make an annotation. If you'd like to add a datum, you can create a datum for this. And the nice thing about this is that Here's the reference surface then. So once you select that, if somebody were to view this in your know, step or, uh, you know, step AP242 or in Creo view, all they would have to do is click on that A data and that tolerance and it would highlight the thing that it's referencing. So you always know, you know, you can change the formatting, but you always know exactly, um, you know, where, uh, what it's referencing. So you can move that onto the elbow, onto the block, whatever you want. And then to update the combination state, it's just right here. So you added something that you want to start, you want to include. Great, you know, hit the update and now that'll be in there. So second combination state, you can see different annotations and you can pull annotations directly from the driving dimensions of the model. So you click show annotations and then the feature and it'll say what are the dimensions that are driving this feature, uh, which is you know, the diameter and the degrees. So you could actually choose which ones you want from that list up in the top right here and then select OK. Um, so now you have you have this option here. You can put your nominal dimensional tolerance on. You can change, you know, the plus minus, whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, add some of that precision information if needed. And then throw a geometric tolerance onto that. So for this, maybe perpendicularity, change the tolerance. Now, whatever you had in here from the last one will be there. So you notice it was flatness and 0.002. So if you want to put all your perpendicular tolerances on in one go, you won't have to, you know, you won't have to type it in each time. Um, this is actually going to reference datum A, and you'll see that it formats it appropriately for you. It puts it in the right spot. And then you can add a symbol. Uh, maybe you want to put uh, some different symbols on that, that help describe what you want to happen. And if you put a, a symbol on, such as like a positional symbol here, uh, this doesn't make any sense for a diameter. So this will, Creo will let you know this is an invalid character. It'll give you that red highlight uh, so that you know, hey, there's something here that, that doesn't quite make sense. Now, if you'd like to add a datum to this here, right, you can add that however you like. And it suggests the next one in the alphabet, which is B, and then you select the reference surface. So that's gonna be that inside of that hole. Uh, now, if you'd like to show annotations, for example, for a pattern of holes, you select the one and select the dimension. And it'll ask you, you know, if you want the pattern or single one. And then when you put the tolerances on, it'll do it for all of them. 
Now, the nice thing about this is once you set all this up, right, you can bring these annotations into a 2D drawing. So if you're in a transition stage between, hey, we should really start modeling on the model because it's so useful and easy, but hey, we also need the 2D drawings, you know, well, that's what everybody's used to. You can do this in here and not have to redo it when you go to a 2D drawing. So if you still want that 2D drawing as backup or, or something for some reason, you can just say bring annotations from Creo and it'll bring all these annotations. So, um, you know, makes it much easier that you don't have to duplicate work. Uh, so you know, it's, it's not a, a waste of time at, at all. Um, and then you could, you know, potentially send both or whatever printed combination state image. Um, so here adding positional tolerance actually makes sense. Like I said, here we have uh, the same options from that we chose before. Add in maybe datum B, it'll format that for you, throw a symbol in there, and uh, maybe some additional text. So just like you can put prefix and suffix, you can put text above, below, left, right. And we're just gonna say that this is four surfaces, right? Control over the details. So again, right, how do we want that justified? Do we want it left, right, or center? You do have that control. Uh, it's just, you know, only if you need it. So to create the references, select all the surfaces. So now if somebody were to select on that, we can see that all four surfaces highlight. So there's no confusion about what this annotation or detail is referencing. It is absolutely referencing you know, these four surfaces. And it's so easy to understand because you're seeing it in 3D and you can you know, move it around and look at it in different ways. Um, so super useful. Putting in a geometric uh, tolerance here, just a different combination state. Um, you know, the colors aren't changing, we're just changing orientations and changing which annotations are visible. Like I said, the, the confusion with model-based definition when it first came out that, uh, you know, maybe slowed the, uh, slowed the uptake of doing model-based definition was that you couldn't set it up the same way you did your drawings, the same way people are used to. It was just overwhelming. Uh, but here with these, these different tools that we have in Creo, you can set this up to be almost just a 3D you know, a 3D version of what you put in that drawing. So it makes it really convenient. Um, showing the annotations is one option. Another option, maybe you have a dimension that you wanna call out that is not driving the model, that's not driving this. So you can actually hit dimension and then choose what references do you want? Um, you know, edges, surfaces, grab the surfaces that you'd like to dimension and it'll put that right in there. Now this will still update if you uh, make changes to your model, of course, because if those are gonna be closer or farther from each other, that number will update accordingly. You can choose how you want those to sit on those arcs. So if you look at the surface, it's gonna be up to the maximum edge of that surface. And then throw in some dimension text. So maybe you want a suffix that says, this is just a reference dimension, something like that. So this is, uh, you know, just some examples here of how to uh, work with this model-based definition. If you would like to save it, there are some options. You can do all sorts of different Creo view options. You can save it as a step, like we mentioned. Uh, and then you can choose, if you choose that 242, you get this option to include annotations. So just make sure that you're checking this checkbox and then the rich content as well, so that everybody gets this, you know, hard work that you put into it where these annotations have been called out. So. Hey, Emily. Yeah. We had someone ask if it's possible to have a dual dimension style, both imperial and metric. Um, that is a great question. And I think that's one that I will have to follow up with because <laughs> I've tried to do that before. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll get the answer to you uh, sometime after the webinar. Yep. Um, okay, actually, uh, maybe, in, and if you wouldn't mind typing back in the chat, whoever asked, do, would you like to show, is it, do you mean that some dimensions are in inches and some dimensions are in centimeters, or do you mean for every dimension, both are shown? Um, that's something that, that might make a difference. So. For every. For every dimension, okay. 
Yeah, well, I'll have to look into that because um, I know I know it's it's difficult to uh, to have you know all of your dimensions in one thing except for a single dimension shown at the same time that's in the the different um, standard. But I'm not sure about all of them. So good question. Okay, cool. We'll figure. We'll get the answer. Any any other questions or no? Um, so just a couple more examples here, right? Looking at the combination state uh, for this example, we can go into the GD&T advisor. So again, everything we've seen so far, if you have Creo, you have those capabilities. So that's all in the annotations tab um, and, and available for you to use right now. GD&T advisor, this is where we're getting into, you know, if this is useful to you, this is something you can add on. Now, what this does is it gives you a feature tree down the side, you have that advisor tree down the bottom, um, and just a simplified user interface for adding these geometric dimensions and tolerances. So we start left to right, pretty simple that way. You hit tolerance feature and then choose the feature, select one or more surfaces, it gives you at the bottom some uh, information. And then it highlights in red and yellow everything that is absolutely needed for this tolerance to make sense. So when you do the drop down for which kind you want, you'll notice that a lot of these are grayed out. And that's because uh, you cannot put a positional tolerance on this surface. That doesn't make any sense. So it actually won't let you choose that, um, helping you again, not put nonsensical geometric dimensions and tolerances on to confuse your downstream um, uh, you know, um, coworkers. So, up here we have green are suggested and the one with the asterisk is suggested to do first. And then the yellow you have to fill in, that's your tolerance. Now it automatically selected datum feature and had it labeled as A, so that's here. Now, once you have this on your model, you can edit this in, this is just an annotation. Creo, at, once it's on here, Creo doesn't know if you made it from gd &T Advisor or if you made it in the annotations tab. So if you wanna move that elbow around, put it on the arm, you know, whatever you wanna do, change a color scheme, you know, that's up to you. So, um, so doing another example, maybe this hole, you can put in, you can put in your nominal dimensional tolerances uh, here, which is just, nice because you know you don't want to have to go in and out of annotation um, and gd &T advisor so it does give you the option to do that here um, just as a convenience thing you'll notice different options are available for this one uh, there are a couple that are able to be selected but not suggested so the green ones again are suggested um, but they're not all grayed out like the last time and you can add in the yellow fields tell you what needs to be there Datum feature B, datum feature is checked, which means it's suggested that you add that as a datum. Um, you know, if it, it based that based on what datums are already in your model, what kind of tolerance it is, you can throw in some additional text. This all just makes it easy for you to get the information into the model, easy for someone on the other side to view it and understand what's going on and to limit errors because the whole reason you're putting all these tolerances on and going through the, the you know, process of documenting all of this is to reduce errors and scrap and, and misunderstandings. And so if you're not doing it the best way as possible, you're still gonna get errors and scrap and misunderstandings. So, you know, it's a little bit of, um, it's a little bit of shame that you would, would do all of this and then still have issues. So. That's one reason why the GDNT advisor is nice because as you're getting people up to speed, it makes sure that that this is all usable information and that the person on the other side isn't going to make a cut or something that that you know causes scrap that they shouldn't have done. So uh, to add a second one, you'll notice that the different um, options are available. So it has actually different suggestions after you've chosen the first uh, the first dimension, the first tolerance. Then again, yellow fields, you have to add those in or it doesn't make any sense. And then datum feature C is suggested for this one. So just, yeah, going through some examples of throwing these on the model. Starting to look pretty good. Uh, you can tolerance on the other side, put a geometric dimension and tolerance. So here maybe 0.005. 
Uh, you can change that nominal dimension plus minus. And this one does not have a datum feature selected, you'll notice. So that means it already knows that there's a datum that it can use for this and it doesn't need to be its own. It doesn't need to be its own. Uh, so it, you won't add that on. So it references C, which was made in the last one. Now, one more example of a pattern of folds. You can see up here, add entire pattern is an option that you have in the checkbox. So if you don't want the whole pattern, not a problem. If you do, it automatically selects all of those surfaces so that if someone were to be viewing this on a computer, they would see those highlight when they uh, choose that annotation. Uh, so this one does not need a datum feature. And it builds all those for you. Now you can move these around. Uh, quick tip, if you choose annotation in the bottom right, it will only let you choose annotations. So it uh, makes it easy to pull those around, maybe if you have a lot going on. Additional text, you can put, this is exists in two places, makes it very clear. And then you can actually reference that other place where it is. Um, now you'll notice over in the advisor tree, it gives you some warnings and errors. This error is because zero tolerance is not allowed. So it lets you know that uh, there, you know, there needs to be a change. You can actually edit the dimension from the advisor tree. So right here where it has that uh, 0.13, you can change the tolerances on that. Uh, I should also mention if you're using tolerance analysis, model-based definition, and GDNT. Um, I mean, not so much, I guess the advisor too, but they work with the tolerance analysis. So you can, you know, put all these annotations in, in and, and you, but then run your tolerance uh, analysis and it'll take these actually into account tolerances that you've already put on it. Um, so that makes it really easy to, uh, to make, you know, it's not, again, you're not duplicating work. One really nice thing about the GDNT advisor is the show hide constraint state. So what this does is it's a basic to-do list. Like I said, errors and rework are the, what we're trying to avoid with all this documentation, making it easy to understand. So let's make sure that it's complete. Um, and this has you know, the tool to do that is this constraint state. So you can see that anything gray is unconstrained. Anything green is fully constrained. If you edit the properties, you have an option for properties and notes. So you can actually put a general profile note that has a tolerance on it. So note two here, unless otherwise specified, this tolerance applies to all surfaces. So now all those gray surfaces are blue uh, and the person on the other end can see that note. So again, trying to, trying to set this up, you know, similarly to, to those, um, those 2D drawings that we're so used to. Now you can change the orientation of these annotations, flip them around, rotate text, uh, things like that. And then this would be a great option if you want to print these out, um, you know, to, to send as a consumable item, or if you're, you know, going into uh, 2D drawings anyway, you can pull this information in. You have to reformat them, but, um, you know, the annotations are still there, so. Really great way to, uh, you know, almost uh, very easily without changing too much in your process, uh, reducing wasted um, time and errors downstream. Uh, so this was all I had to show for uh, the examples today. I do want to briefly touch on, you know, what business value you can expect from this. So this is very valuable if you choose to do model-based definition, all these tools are really great if you're trying to do model-based definition and geometric dimension and tolerancing. Uh, but, you know, maybe why would you want to start adding model-based definition into your process? Well, Creo makes it really easy and you can reduce scrap and product failures that are caused by poor communication. Being able to see something in 3D is so much easier than seeing a grainy drawing in 2D, trying to understand what edge they're talking about, whether it's a cut or an extrude or what's going on. Um, so you're gonna have better productivity because it's easier to build these from scratch or to change them. Um, the people who are working off of this information, it's easier, it's a more complete environment for those users. Uh, so it's, it's, all, um, it's all a better working environment. 
The GDNT advisor is really nice because it educates your designers. So you don't have to worry so much about that transition of we didn't do this in the past, but we want to do it in the future. It makes that transition much smoother uh, because if you have more educated designers, you have better designs and more control of your tolerances means cost savings, quality savings. I mean, you, you know, tolerancing is a big deal for how the product actually comes out at the end. Um, Improve quality through validation, so you can validate that in your 3D model, and then there's something to validate against on the other end as well. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, and I'm a pretty quick talker, but I hope that this was useful to everybody, and I will um, you know, be happy to try to answer any other questions that we might have. Um, but otherwise, Rob, I can pass it over to you. Yeah, so a couple of questions. Uh, keep the con just in case you need to show something. Um, one question is, can you do a worst case tolerance analysis on mating parts to check for interferences and no fit possibilities? Um, so you can do a worst case interference check uh, in tolerance analysis on mated parts. I am not positive if how that handles, what were the two um, interferences? And no fit possibilities. And no fit. Um, I, I mean, I know we have like an interference check as well in Creo. Um, so that would probably tell you if there's an interference to start with and then you could run your tolerance analysis. Um, I'm not sure about the no fit possibility, but I can, ask somebody who does more tolerance analysis and I can get back to you. You have all recorded, Rob, or, or were you able to do a people's email? Yes, we, we can, we can, I can send, um, I can send your answer to, uh, to the person who asked. Okay. Uh, next question. How would you go about generating a traditional 2D drawing after doing the 3D annotations? Yeah, so the way to do that would just be to create the 2D drawing like you normally would. And then there's an option in the 2D drawing um, user interface in the ribbon to pull annotations from the 3D model and um, any annotations. So basically any annotations that you set up in 3D would be pulled into 2D. You can, there's an option for bring all my annotations that I already set up, bring those into my drawing. Um, and then it's just a matter of putting those where you want them, you know, so they would all be there uh, and, and attached to the correct entity. You would just have to decide, uh, you know, how you want to lay those out then. Cool. Yeah. I can probably send some screenshots of that too in the email we follow up with. Okay. Excellent. So I think that's, um, I think we're good. Yeah, that's it for the questions. Great. Emily, great job. Thanks. Excellent job. So, so what we're going to, so uh, this is going to conclude the webinar. Now we're, there's a PTC webinar on Tuesday that PTC is hosting regarding additive manufacturing. So we're going to promote that webinar. Um, so next Thursday, the 17th, we will not have a webinar. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Uh, on the 24th, we will have a webinar at noon on flexible modeling. And this is a capability that is already in Creo. Um, but the purpose of having this webinar is to um, maybe give you a little tips and tricks on how to use uh, flexible modeling a little better. And also if there's, you know, what improvements have been done to flexible modeling over the past couple of releases. I mean, it's a tremendous tool. And if you don't, if you're not using it or you're not aware of it, email me immediately because this thing can save you a lot of time. Um, and then we're looking at having a surfacing webinar on April 1st. And as we plan out the rest of the uh, webinar calendar, I will let you all know what's happening and when. So once again, thanks for being on with us today. Emily, great job. We appreciate your help and support. And if you have any other questions, you can just respond to the email invitation that you received. Those um, responses will come directly to me. Anything that you reply in those email invitations come to me. So ask anything you want 
and uh, we're glad to help. Thanks again, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you on Tuesday, and we will see you on the 24th. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.